Let's stand up and sing number 370, Victory in Jesus. 370 in your red hymnal. seated. Good evening. It is so good to see all of you here tonight and greetings also to those who are following us 
online. I don't really have very many announcements tonight. I'll talk about the offering later. But for those of you who are not familiar with Centenary, if you need to go to the restroom, there are restrooms through those double doors and through those, there's a restroom through that double door as well. If you need to have, a, if you take a little break in the middle of the service tonight. We, um, I want to thank also, I want to thank our musicians, Paul Syke and Tim Maddox and our revival choir. And later on, David and Susan Briley. We're looking forward to their offering as well. Did I forget anybody? Paul, is that what we've got for the lineup tonight? We're so glad to have you because a revival is not a revival without music that lifts the spirit and strengthens the soul. Revival. Haven't had one at Centenary in a while. What is a revival? It's an improvement in the condition or strength of something. It's an instance of something becoming popular, active, or important again. It's a reawakening of religious fervor, especially by means of a series of evangelistic meetings. It's a restoration to bodily or mental vigor, to life or consciousness, or to success. We hope that our revival is all of those things. Last fall, as we planned our ministry for 2023, the time seemed right for us to hold the first revival that we had had in many years. So we were planning this long before the revival started up at Asbury College in Kentucky. But I don't think it's a coincidence that their revival and our revival are happening at the same time. And I saw last night that there is a revival that has now started at Belmont College in Nashville, Tennessee as it spreads. Why now? Why revival now for Centenary? Well, we, we celebrated our 250th anniversary last year. It was a wonderful time with guest speakers and guest musicians every month. And we didn't want to lose our momentum and the hope that we were building up over the past year. There has been a lot of disruption and division in our community from United Methodist Church splitting. And we knew that there was a call for healing and hope in the midst of that. And there's so much tension in the world right now between uh, getting over the COVID-19 pandemic that lasted over two years, this frightening war in Ukraine, natural disasters like the terrible earthquake, man-made disasters like the terrible train derailment, so many things going on to weigh us down. This morning, one of our members during our prayer concern says, please pastor, pray for all our mental health. We're all carrying so many burdens and have so much on our plate. Nothing is better for that than a revival of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 85, 6 says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And that is what we're praying for tonight. And let me start us now with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Reviving God, we live in an age where people seek to find something to give their lives meaning. And what they seek, they often do not find because they're not looking toward the true source of life itself, you. Father, tonight we come together as true and sincere followers to ask for a revival of our souls in this day and age. You tell us in Matthew 7 to come and ask for what we desire. We desire for our friends and our families and our neighbors to be open to seek the authentic source of abundant and eternal life, Christ our Lord. We invite your Holy Spirit to pour out here onto the people that you've made. We invite you to perform miracles, wonders, and to speak to your people. Almighty God, you touch the world and the world changes. You touch us and we're transformed. In the brightest of day, in the deepest of night, on the mountain, in the valley, everywhere. In this time together, God of new life, revive our spirits and renew our hopes and dreams. Open the eyes of our hearts to the transformation of our lives. And through all the changes of life, from every new beginning to our ending in glory, we praise you, we worship you, we thank you, and we love you. Hallelujah and amen. And before we move on to the next thing, I know that some of you are truly seeking something here tonight. You're seeking healing. You're seeking the answer to a question. Some of you are just curious. You may never have been to a revival before, and you're not sure what to expect. Is this going to be one of those emotional outpourings like you see on the videos from Asbury, Kentucky? Is this going to be one of those serene and reverent revivals like they used to have in the old days in the Church of England where the main 
impact of it came afterwards. Is this, is this going to be an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival with people speaking in tongues and being slain in the Spirit? You're wondering what you're going to see. I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is, is that the Spirit of God is present in this place, and God is directing this service. And I just want to leave you with this. Welcome home to Centenary.
Tonight we have two scripture passages. The first one is a single verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Hear now this reading of God's word. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. The second reading is from the, uh, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let's sing number 364 now. Find it in your hymnal, 364, Because He Lives, and you're invited to stand if you're able.
during the season of Lent, Centenary's Mission Committee has opted to give Tried by Fire Incorporated our Lenten offering. Tried by Fire Incorporated is a New Bern nonprofit organization committed to help post-incarcerated incarcerated women find hope and healing during tough times through faith in Jesus Christ. Tried by Fire's My Sister's House will provide temporary shelter, 90 to 120 days, to up eight women at one time in a monitored, supported environment after their release from prison. These are women who are looking for a new beginning in life. A personal transition plan for each woman is created and referrals are arranged with existing programs and services in the community to help them get back on their feet. Guests can rebuild their lives towards a positive and productive future. My sister's house needs to raise $5,000 by the end of April from new donors to receive a recently awarded grant from the Anonymous Trust in Raleigh. So our proceeds will go, to, go towards those uh, meeting that matching fund amount. And that's what our offering will go to tonight. Maybe something different tonight or the night after that, but tonight it goes to my sister's house. Let me offer a prayer and then our ushers are gonna come forward to receive our revival offering. Let us pray. God of the universe, we thank you that your promises are sure. We can trust them. We can rely on you. You're faithful. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, our talents, and our treasure to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely and sacrificially and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. Tonight, God, we receive this offering for my sister's house. We pray for new beginnings for the women who are trying to start their lives over. May you cause the seeds we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us and make your face shine upon us. Turn your face towards us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Look around you tonight. Look around this building. Look at the faces of the people sitting around you. For those of you who have been to this church, this is a different place than the one you walked into last time you were here, even if it was just this morning. Because when you came in here, you were a different person. You had experienced another day of life. And not only that, some who were here the last time you were here are not. And some who weren't here are here now. The world is constantly changing. Some things are gone, some things are new, but everything is in transition. Nothing ever stays the same. As the days get warmer and the trees bud and the first flowers bloom and the mosquitoes get sucked into the house every time I open the front door, I think about the change of seasons. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. We serve a God of seasons. We see this in creation, obviously. God created the four seasons based upon the tilt of the earth on its axis as it moves around the sun. The seasons change as the earth moves, but the sun is constant and everything revolves around it. We see the signature of the same artist in our lives. Much like the earth, our lives should revolve around the sun, the S-O-N sun, Jesus Christ. Our lives change and we exit and enter many seasons, but the Son of God remains constant and faithful yesterday, today, and forever. We serve a God of seasons. But God doesn't measure his seasons with calendars. He measures them through his truth. When God gives you a fresh word, when God gives you a new perspective on your life, you have just stepped into a new season. Scripture says to everything there is a season. Every phase of life is a season, and there is a purpose for each season. There are seasons that you didn't want to go through. But those are the seasons that helped you to learn things that you needed to know. And you wouldn't have learned them had you not gone through those things. Some of you may be in a difficult season right now, having to learn stuff you never wanted to learn about yourself or the world. Still, God is good. And as I tell people that are going through a difficult time, God doesn't waste anything, not even our suffering. There are seasons that you've gone through, and you don't know why you had to go through them, but God knows. And just because you've gone through a rough season, that doesn't mean God is finished with you. He who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Let's look at the life of one disciple that everybody can identify with, I think, Peter. He may have been the most flawed of the 12, and I think most of us can identify with all the things he went through. He went through some rough seasons in his life. As we look at his life, let's discuss three key principles about stepping into a new season. The first is this, stepping into a new season brings new changes. Stepping into a new season brings new changes. Change is inevitable. We look at the world and we notice things that are different today than they were 10 years ago, last year, even yesterday. Life changes fast, doesn't it? But remember, we serve a God of seasons, and each season is different from the next. Some are meant for things to grow. Some are meant for things to die back and go dormant. In some seasons, the days are longer, and some, the nights are longer. Sometimes it seems like your good days, your mountaintop experiences with God, last a long time. But then there are those seasons when it feels like the night will never end. In those long nights when the tears feel like they will never stop flowing, the dawn does eventually come, the tears end, and joy returns. God gives us a new word to carry us into new and different seasons. And why does God do that? Because we're creatures of habit. And if God didn't change things up, we would become complacent and stale. We would stop growing. We need change in our lives to grow. When I was a kid, I used to look forward to summer. 
Back then, if it had been up to me, I would, it would have been summer all year long. I loved it. I didn't want to go back to school, but the seasons had to change, didn't they? There was a time to play and have fun, but the times had to change so that I could then learn new things. Peter entered into a new season of his life when Jesus first called him. Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. One day, Peter was an ordinary fisherman trying to scratch out a living, and then Jesus walked by and his life was changed forever. He stepped into a new season, one that I am sure he never imagined he would enter, one in which God transformed him from a relative nobody to a somebody. Jesus made him somebody he wasn't before. It was more than just a change in vocation. It was an inward change of his heart that took place when he began to follow Jesus. The second principle is that stepping into a new season brings new challenges. When Peter began to follow Jesus, he was faced not only with change, but also a lot of tough obstacles. His faith was challenged when he stepped out of a storm-battered boat to walk on the water. Remember that story? He stepped out and immediately began to sink. His feelings were challenged at a different time when he proclaimed Jesus the Son of God. And then the next minute, he was rebuked by Jesus. Remember what he, Jesus said to him? Get thee behind me, Satan. I don't think anybody wants to be called Satan, do they? That's got to be a challenge. I don't know about you, but it would have hurt my feelings. <laughs> his traditions and his prejudices were challenged when he followed Jesus into Samaria, north of Judea, a land where Jews weren't really welcome, where the Jewish practices Peter was so fond of weren't practiced. His humility was challenged when Jesus lowered himself to the point of a servant and knelt at Peter's feet and washed them. And yet in all these instances, Peter stepped up to the challenge. Yet he also had a season of failure, didn't he? When he went from being a devoted follower of Jesus to being one who followed him at a distance because he was afraid. You remember that story? The night before Jesus was crucified, Peter denied knowing him three times. I don't even know the guy, Peter said. Can you imagine? When we step into a season when it feels like the world is going to hell in a handbasket, we can feel as dry and empty as Peter did when he betrayed his teacher and his best friend. We're always going to have those times when, despite our best efforts, we're going to feel like we've let the Lord down. But there is a purpose, remember, for every season. What Peter didn't know, and what many of us fail to realize, is that the love of Jesus Christ is always greater than our failures. Always. When we fail to meet the challenges of a new season of life, the Lord is always there to offer us grace and mercy far greater than our shortcomings. Peter could have stayed down for the rest of his life after the crucifixion. He could have stayed stuck in a dark, cold season. But he obeyed Jesus and he waited for him and he was restored third principle is stepping into a new season births new champions. Peter was transformed from an ordinary fisherman into a brave Christian leader. The first bishop of Rome. The first pope. Those who had known Peter before he met Jesus were amazed to see this new champion of God's love. They couldn't believe he was the same man. God transforms us by his power, and God is calling us, his champions, to step into a new season of confidence and spiritual power. Brothers and sisters, we are to tell others, and we are to show others by our love, that those who were once held under will now be coming over. We are to tell them and show them that those who were once forgotten will now be remembered. We're to tell them and show them that those who were depressed will once again rejoice. We're called to tell them and show them that those who were once rejected will now be accepted. 
we are called to tell them and show them by our love that those who are downtrodden will have their heads lifted up. We are to tell them and show them that those who grieve will have their joy made manifest, that those who were once poor will be able to say, I am rich in Jesus Christ, that those who were afflicted will once again walk in wholeness. We are called to be champions for Christ. In Jesus Christ, we step into a new season every single day where the things that have been taken from us will someday, on this side of the neck, be restored and increased. And I know that tonight I'm talking to at least a few people who have been through some seasons. Some of you have had to learn how to praise God all by yourself. You've had to praise God through a veil of tears. But I want you to know that season is over. Tonight is a new beginning. Tonight you're stepping into a new season. A new season of love and light and hope and healing is upon you right now. And I want you all right now, I want you to look at somebody next to you and I want you to say, today is a new beginning for me. Let's do it. Say it. And say this, I claim that in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody else and say, my new season is here. And say to them, I am Jesus' champion. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, we traditionally close out a revival service with an altar call. All an altar call is is an invitation to prayer. You are invited during the next song or songs to come forward if you choose to do so. You may come to the rail. You may kneel or stand. You can pray silently by yourself for healing or for hope or even for a transformed heart. If you want a pastor to pray with you, all you need to do when you come down is to raise your hand and we will give you a prayer or we will have a blessing with you. I have oil from the Holy Land here that I can use to anoint you if you need it for healing or for a blessing. And because I want to always be prepared for what God might do, we have baptismal water as well. For those of you who might want to feel the water of salvation for the very first time, just let us know if that's what you want. I love this church because if you don't want to come down, you can stay at your seat because we have padded kneelers. You can kneel right there in your pew. You can do that. So I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray, and then after I pray, we're all going to sing together number 383. This is the day of new beginnings. And if we need to, we'll go on and sing number 593. Here I am, Lord. So let us pray. Lord, we are all plagued by anxiety on many fronts. Our health, unrest in our country, financial problems, controversies about everything from school to politics, and the uncertainty is so high on every front. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We pray that you would help us to rest in you, trusting in your loving sovereignty. May we persevere, bringing all of our anxieties to you. Be in our midst as we lift up our country and our leaders. Defend the vulnerable and the voiceless and bring justice to those who have suffered injustice. Lord, help us to daily put on the armor of God and to stand firm and commit to pray for our community and our country and our friends and our family. Help us to shine the love and mercy of Jesus Christ, never losing sight that our struggle is not with other people, but against the spiritual forces that influence us. God, we pray for a revival and spiritual awakening to sweep throughout our country and our world. And so we come before you humbly tonight, acknowledging our need for you. Guide us as we seek to live out your will in our lives. Shine your light into those areas of our lives where we need to make changes. Give us that desire to be more like Jesus. Lord, yours are the seasons and the ages. Give us a new heart and a new spirit. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you are the beginning and the end of all that is, including our lives. Make a new beginning with all of us. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you breathe your Holy Spirit on all creation. 
make our old world new again. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us and let your forgiveness and your love come down upon us day after day and lead us to everlasting, everlasting life. And God's children all said, Amen. Number 383, and I invite you to come as the Spirit leads you. We will be waiting for you at the front.
Each day is filled with infinite possibilities for new beginnings and new discoveries. Life is constantly changing and renewing itself. In this day of new beginnings with God, all things are possible. We are restored and renewed in a joyous reawakening to the wonder that our lives are and yet can be. Receive this blessing. Accept God's offer of new beginnings and new life. God offers you a garland of joy instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So sing and dance and rejoice and never forget the gift of God's grace in Jesus Christ. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen.